I have to ask you about the one of the interesting developments with large language models is that they're able to generate code uh, recently really well. Uh, yes. To a degree that uh, maybe, I, I don't know if you understand, but I have, I struggle to understand because it, it forces me to ask questions about the nature of programming, of the nature of thought, because the uh, language models are able to predict the kind of code I was about to write so well. Yep. That it makes me wonder like how unique my brain is and where the valuable ideas actually come from. Like how much do I contribute in terms of uh, ingenuity, innovation to code I write or design and that kind of stuff. Um, when you stand on the shoulders of giants, are you really doing anything? And what LLMs are helping you do is they help you stand on the shoulders of giants when you program. There's mistakes, they're interesting that you learn from, but I just, it would love to get your opinion first high level yeah. of what you think about uh, this impact of large language models when they do program synthesis, when they generate code. Yeah, well, so um, I don't know where it all goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm an optimist and I'm a human optimist, right? I think that um, things I've seen are that a lot of the LLMs are really good at crushing leak code projects mm -hmm. and they can reverse the link list like crazy. Um, well, it turns out there's a lot of instances of that on the internet and it's a pretty stock thing. And so if you want to see standard questions answered, LLMs can memorize all the answers and that can be amazing. And also they do generalize out from that. And so there's good work on that. But um, but I think that if you, in my experience, building things, building something like you talk about Mojo or you talk about these things, or you talk about building an applied solution to a problem, it, it's also about working with people. It's about understanding the problem. What is the product that you want to build? What are the use case? What are the customers? You can't just go survey all the customers because they'll tell you that they want a faster horse. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need a car, right? And so a lot of it comes into, um, you know, I don't feel like we have to compete with LLMs. I think they'll help automate a ton of the mechanical stuff out of the way. And just like, you know, I think we all try to scale through delegation and things like this, delegating wrote things to an LLM, I think is an extremely valuable and uh, approach that will help us all scale and be more productive. But I think it's a it's a but, fascinating companion. But I'd say I don't think that that means that we're going to be done with coding. <laughs> sure, sure. But there's power in it as a companion. And yeah, uh, absolutely. So from there, I could I would love to zoom in onto Mojo a little bit. Do you think uh, Do you think about that? Do you think about LLMs generating Mojo code uh, and helping sort of like when yeah. you design a new programming language? It almost seems like Man, yeah. it would be nice to sort of um, almost as a way to learn how I'm supposed to use this thing for them to be trained on some of the Mojo yeah. code. Well, so I do lead an AI company, so maybe there will be a Mojo LLM at some point. Uh, but if your question is like, how do we make a language to be suitable for LLMs? Yeah, I think that the um, I think the cool thing about LLMs is you don't have to, <laughs> right? And so if you look at what is English or any of these other terrible languages that we as humans deal with on a continuous basis? They're never designed for machines. And yet they're the intermediate representation. They're the exchange format that we humans use to get stuff done, right? And so these programming languages, they're an intermediate representation between the human and the computer or the human and the compiler, roughly, right? And so I think the LLMs will have no problem learning Whatever keyword we pick. Maybe the fire emoji is gonna- Oh, uh, maybe that's critical. gonna break it. It doesn't gonna, tokenize. No, the reverse of that, it will actually enable it because one of the issues I could see with being a superset of Python is there would be confusion about the gray area. So it would be mixing stuff, uh, but- Well, I'm, I'm a human optimist. I'm also an LLM optimist. I think that we'll solve that problem. We'll solve but, the, yeah, GPU. But, uh, um, but, but you look at that and you say, okay, well, reducing the rote, thing, right? It turns out compilers are very particular and they really want things, they really want the indentation to be right. They really want the colon to be there on your else or else it'll complain, right? I mean, compilers can do better at this, but um, LLMs can totally help solve that problem. And so I'm very happy about the new uh, predictive coding and copilot type features and things like this, because I think it'll all just make us more productive. It's still messy and fuzzy and uncertain, unpredictable. Yeah. So, but is there a future you see given how big of a leap GPT-4 was, where you start to see something like LLMs inside 
a compiler or no? Uh, I mean, you could do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that'd be interesting. Is that um, wise? Well, well, I mean, it would be very expensive. So compilers run fast and they're very yeah. efficient and LLMs are currently very expensive. There's on-device LLMs and there's other things going on. And so maybe there's an answer there. Um, I think that one of the things that I haven't seen enough of is that, so LLMs to me are amazing when you tap into the creative potential of the hallucinations, mm -hmm. right? And so if you're build, doing creative brainstorming or creative writing or things like that, the hallucinations work in your favor. Um, if you're writing code that has to be correct because you're going to ship it in production, then maybe that's not actually a feature. <laughs> and so I think that there there has been research and there has been work on building algebraic reasoning systems and kind of like figuring out more things that feel like proofs. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there could be interesting work in terms of building more reliable at scale systems, and that could be interesting. But if you chase that rabbit hole down, the question then becomes, how do you express your intent to the machine? And so maybe you want LLM to provide the spec, but you have a different kind of net that then actually implements the code. Right, so it's a use the it's documentation and, and inspiration versus the actual implementation. Yeah, potentially.